Hey, what's up everybody? You've seen me out operating portable a lot with a variety of kits, but I've never really shown you what's in them. So today, we're gonna go through what's in my KX2 kit. Stay tuned. This is the entire station that I'm gonna try activating with today. Uh, also, it's 10 rock mic setup. Any other stations out there? K6ARK. So here it is. This is my complete KX2 kit. The kit fits into this Kelty cash box. It's uh, about seven inches long here, about three and a half inches deep, and oh, about three inches tall. So three by three and a half by seven inches. So everything that I need for a single sideband or CW activation fits in here. Let's check the weight on this thing. So 26.72 ounces is our total weight there. That's one pound, about one pound 11 ounces. So not bad, pretty light system here. Let's take a look inside. So of course, first thing you notice there is the KX2. And I've got a miniature iambic paddle tucked in the side here. This is a small paddle that I built but you can find similarly sized commercial paddles online. Previously, there was the Pico, Palm Pico paddle, but they went out of business and are no longer available. But uh, I'll provide a couple options in the links below. But consider building one. They're kind of a fun little project, and it's neat to tap away at CW with something you made. The radio just barely fits into this case. I actually had to stretch the case slightly to make it fit. case gives it a decent amount of padding, not too much, but it's slightly, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of felt lining there and some kind of harder rubberish foam on the outside of the case that helps protect the radio. In the pocket in the lid here, I've got a standard set of earbuds. Uh, fortunately with this radio, if I happen to forget them, the radio itself has a speaker built in, which is a nice little bonus. The antenna here is an end-fed random wire. Now the KX2 has a built-in tuner, so we've got a significant advantage there in being able to operate uh, a random wire antenna for, for multiple bands and, and keep the system really simple. This antenna is super light, and check out one of uh, my other videos there. I'll link in the description below to see how to build one of these. So let's talk about this miniature microphone for a bit. I built this from an earbud headset or microphone that came with a Baofeng. I'm sure you guys all have a few of those laying around. They're, they're not nearly as nice to use as a speaker mic and I suspect most of us just throw them in the junk bin. So here's a, a good way to put it to productive use. I'll have to put together a build video for this sometime in the near future. I'm sure there's going to be some interest from you soda operators out there to lighten up your kit and switch over to a lighter weight microphone. Now for comparison, let's take a look at this little microphone compared to the standard KX2 microphone. So let's do a quick comparison here. Got the standard KX2 microphone on the right and the miniature microphone here on the left. PTT's on the side for this little guy. You, yeah, you lose the up and down controls that you have on the KX2 mic, but uh, that's a compromise I'm willing to make. Let's compare the weight difference here. I can assure you that uh, this larger KX2 microphone would not fit in the same little case. So, 0.6 ounces here for the miniature microphone. And the KX2 microphone, 4.6 ounces. So, 0.6 versus 4.6 ounces. You say four ounces or a quarter of a pound with, uh, with the smaller microphone here. A worthy compromise, in my opinion. So I think it's worth taking a closer look at this little iambic paddle as well. This thing is super simple. It's a piece of acrylic with a, a groove for a slot cut in it. You can see it looking down from the end there. And I took a couple of pieces of shim stock, spring steel, 
and use those as the two iambic levers. They're connected via some very small nuts and bolts here on the sides of that channel. And then I've got a, a washer on another bolt connected to the ground in the bottom of the paddle right here. When you pr press on these levers, they just ground out to that, uh, that washer, that ground piece in the center. And you've got your iambic key. Simple headphone cable with a three and a half millimeter tip ring sleeve pin on the end. And in the end, you've got an iambic key that weighs in at 11.7 grams or oh, about four tenths of an ounce. So we'll take a closer look at the box here. Like I mentioned, this is a Kelty cash box and this is the small size. I'm going to link this in the description below in case any of you are interested in purchasing one of these. They don't make this exact color and specific style anymore. The new ones are a little bit different, but uh, the sizing appears to be about the same. Now, fair warning, the KX2 barely fits in this thing. You very well may have to stretch this a little bit. I used a couple of uh, woodworking clamps and uh, uh, a little strategery with pieces of wood to, uh, to stretch the length of this slightly, just to make the, the radio fit in a little more smoothly. And now it's, uh, it's just a nice little snug fit. Just like that. In the top lid here, is where I store the antenna. The earbuds tuck in behind. And the mini microphone down here on the end. And finally, the paddle gets tucked in the side here, right above the BNC connector, with the cable just tucked in behind the radio. So there you have it. Probably one of the most compact KX2 kits out there. Doesn't quite fit in your pocket, but it's not far from it. Uh, easy to carry up the side of a mountain and play radio when you get there. Hope you guys enjoyed this tour. We got more on the way. We're gonna look at the Mountain Topper MTR3B next, and then after that, the 857 kit. So stay tuned. So before we wrap things up here, I wanna make a quick public service announcement. The SoCal Soda Group is having a SoCal Soda Fest on Saturday and Sunday, August 1st and 2nd. That's just a couple weeks from now, so it's coming up soon. Activators will be on peaks on Saturday and Sunday, generally from around 6 a.m. Saturday till the evening on Sunday. If you go to SoCalSoda.com, you'll find more info about the event and frequencies we'll be operating on. If you live in the area, consider monitoring some of the Simplex uh, VHF and UHF frequencies to listen for us. And if you live further away, keep an eye on Soda Watch and perhaps you'll get to chase us on HF. There will be stations operating on all different bands and all different frequencies and all different modes, so it should be a blast. Hope you guys uh, join in and participate. Big thanks to Mike Molina for setting up the group and, uh, and getting this event together. So check out SoCalSoda.com for more info, and hope you enjoy the event. Till next time, this is Adam with K6ARK Portable Radio, SAN 73.